Grace and peace be multiplied unto you, my father's children. It's good to be here one more time. If you would, take your copy of God's word and come with me to 2 Samuel chapter 7, where we'll be looking at verses 1 through 17 for our reading. This is one of the most important passages ever written in God's holy and divine word. It's important for several different reasons because in it, God is establishing a covenant with David. And what God will do for David, he will also do for us. This passage is also important because it contains one of the longest dialogues that God has with his people in one given setting. And we know when God speaks, everyone should be listening. If you have your word now, join me in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 1 through 17. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Now when the king lived in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all of his surrounding enemies, the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells in a tent. And Nathan said to the king, go and do all that is in your heart to do, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, would you build me a house to dwell in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent for my dwelling in all places where I have moved with all the people of Israel. Did I speak a word to the judges of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel? Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture from following the sheep, that you should be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may dwell in their own place and be disturbed no more. And the violent men shall afflict them no more as formerly. From the time that I've appointed judges over my people of Israel, and I will give you rest from all of your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord would make you a house. And when the days are fulfilled and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring after you who shall come from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the, his throne, his kingdom forever. I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And when he commits iniquity, I will discipline him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the sons of men. But my steadfast love would not depart from him as I took it from Saul, whom I put away from before you, and your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. In accordance with all these words and in accordance with this vision, Nathan spoke to David. This concludes the reading of God's word. May he bless and grace us with more insight, wisdom, and understanding. Let us pray. Oh God and Master, we thank you now for this opportunity and privilege to study your word together. We thank you for all things have been established according to your word. We pray now that you would illuminate it, uh, give us more understanding, give us the ability to articulate it and reason the word of God with your people. I ask all these in your son. In Jesus' name I pray. And we say together, amen and amen. We join our text at a very festive time 
very celebratory time in the life and history of Israel. This is one of the most important passages in the Word of God because in it, we see God's love being established to his people. A few days ago, now uh, being rem removed, David is now at home in his palace. All of his enemies have been brought to rest and quieted at the hand of God. But there's something wrong. David, although he had peace with his enemies, he was not at peace within himself. I can imagine him walking around in his palace and as he look and he see his fine house and contemplating on all the wonderful things that the Lord had done for him over the years. But he was discontented in heart because he said these words to the prophet Nathan. He said, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the, tent, but the ark of the Lord dwells in a tent. And before he could state another uh, word, Nathan intercedes and he said, all that is in your heart to do, do it for the Lord is with you. And that night as Nathan went home, the Lord came to him and he spoke and said, David is not to build my house. What tragic news that must have been for him to receive and now have to share with David his friend, that he would not be able to build him a house. We are like David in many ways because we do, we desire to do many great and grand things for the Lord. But what if I share with you today, it's not about what you can do for God, but it's about what he has done for you and I. What great things the Lord has done. This text is tailored to teach us what great things the Lord has done. What has the Lord done? He has provided David with his presence. He has prevailed over David's enemies. He has prepared David's people a place to be planted. And he has given David, he has promised David a perpetual kingdom. What great things have God done? He has provided David with his presence. Look, if you will, at verses six and seven. Thus says the Lord, would you build me a house to dwell in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent for my dwelling in all places where I have moved with all the people of Israel. God is sharing with Nathan his long desire to be with his people. He said, I did not, and I did not request from the judges of those days who shepherded his people to build him a house of cedar. And the reason was is because he wanted to provide Israel with his presence. Wherever they lodged, God was there. Wherever they slept, God was there. Wherever they walked, God was there. He desired to be amongst his people so that they could be provided with his presence. If you and I were walking, I would hope and pray that you are not galloping ahead of me. Neither do I hope that you would be uh, walking behind me or straggling behind. My desire would be that we would walk stride for stride and step for step. This is the same attitude and the same demeanor that Christ, God had with his people at that time. He walked with them. He lodged with them. He was amongst them. He provided his presence to his people. The psalmist have said in Psalms 139 that if I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and fly away, you are there. If I descend below to the lowest parts of the sea, you are there. There's nowhere that the believers of God can go 
that God will not provide his presence. God desires to be in the presence of his people. What great things have God has done? He has provided his presence with his people. And secondly, he has prevailed over David's enemies. Look, if you will, at verses 8 and 9. Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture and from following sheep, that you should be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went and have cut out all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones on the earth. God's ulterior motive for providing his presence to David was that he would prevail over his enemies for him. God often done this many times we observe in the word of God. God always provided the victory for his people. He did it for Moses over Pharaoh. He did it for Gideon over the Midianites. He did it for David over the Philistines. He did it for Joshua over the people that dwelled in the walls of Jericho. God often uh, delivered the enemies of David into his hand without little or no actions at all. God prevailed over David's enemies. Jeremiah 51 verse 20 is shares with us that God said it in his word that he is my battle axe. He is my weapon of war. Jeremiah understood that it wasn't him that would have to fight the battle. It belonged to the Lord. The Lord will fight our battles. How many things have we faced in life that we have came up against as a child of God and we won. It wasn't because we were the smartest person in the room. It wasn't because we was the most intelligent. It was not because we were the most qualified. It was because the Lord it was on our side. What great things have the Lord done? He provided David with his presence and he has prevailed over David's enemy. And thirdly, what great thing has God done? He has prepared a place for David's people to be planted. Look, if you will, in God's word again at verses 10 and 11. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may dwell in their own place and be disturbed no more. And the violent men shall afflict them no more as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. God has provided a place, prepared a place for David's people to be planted. The word plant means to drive into place. This was what God would often do. He would drive Israel into the place that he wanted them to desire, to subdue it, to capture their enemies. But at times when things went well and Israel strayed away and they turned to their idolatry, God used opposition. He used their enemies to drive them back into his arm. But when they were obedient, on the other hand, God provided them victory. They were able to go into the places that he had told them and subdue and capture all that the Lord has promised. God had caused them to win the battles that they were facing time and time again. God's purpose for being with them was to provide victory in their battles. God won time and time again for them. This word, he says that I have given them an appointed place. Uh, if you were uh, making an appointment with your doctor or with a lawyer or maybe even your barber, 
you are given an appointment time. And that appointment time guarantees that on that day and at that specific hour that that slot was guaranteed and reserved for you and you alone. No one else could, uh, to, uh, no one else can have it. No one else can acquire it because that time has been promised to you. This is the promise that God was given unto David that I have appointed a place for your people where there will be no more enemies to come against them. I will silence every violent man. I will give them peace and harmony and joy as they follow me. What great things has the Lord done? He has provided his presence. He has prevailed over his enemies. He has prepared a place for his people. But then lastly, what great thing has the Lord done? He has, uh, he has promised David a perpetual kingdom. Let us turn our attention to the word of God one more time. Verse 16. And your house and your kingdom shall be sure forever before me, your throne shall be established forever. Although David was unable to build the temple of God, God promised him an offspring, and that offspring was Solomon. Solomon was able to build the temple of God as David desired to do. It was built between 966 and 959 BC. But then the temple was destroyed. It was destroyed. This, by the first temple was destroyed by the Babylonians. Then it was rebuilt and reconstructed. And it was destroyed in 70 AD by the Romans. Had God failed at his promise? Had God reneged on the things that he has promised unto David to establish his kingdom forever? He did not say that it was going to last a little while or a long time, but he used the emphatic word forever to be without end. Had God failed at his promises? The answer is no. God fulfills his promises. How do you know that he fulfilled his promises? If you read the first book and the first verse of the New Testament, Matthew 1 and 1, it will say this is the genealogy of David. This is the genealogy of Jesus, the son of David, the son of Abraham. God fulfills his promises. He's not slack according to the promises some men would think he is. God fulfilled his promise through his son, Jesus Christ, to establish the Davidic kingdom forever through the lineage of David. Jesus was that successor of David, and he was also successful in establishing David's kingdom forever. What great things have God done that he done for David that he has also done for us? He has provided David with his presence. And then he provides today us with his presence the name emmanuel means to be god with us jesus christ was the embodiment of god himself in the flesh and he dwelt amongst his people not only has god provided his presence but then he has also prevailed over david's enemy god has prevailed over our enemy he has prevailed over the enemy of sin, death, and the grave. And our greatest enemies of enemies is Satan himself, the accuser of the brethren. He defeated him at the cross of Calvary that we may be free, that we may have life and have life more abundantly. Not only has God provided his presence and he has prevailed over his enemy, but then God uh, prepared David's people a place to be planted. The Lord has prepared us a place as well. 
For he said in his word that I go away and prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. He has prepared a new heaven and a new earth for us to inherit as the children of God. What great things have the Lord uh, done for David that he has done for us. He has provided him with his presence. He has prevailed over David's enemy. He has prepared a place for his people. And then lastly, he has promised David a perpetual kingdom. That kingdom was fulfilled and still is in place today through the son of Jesus Christ. Blessed be the Lamb of God who has accomplished this Davidic covenant. What God has done for David, he has also done for his people. Let us pray. Oh God and Master, we thank you now for all the promises of God is yes and amen. We thank you for the completion of this work being fulfilled in your son, Christ Jesus. We thank you for all that he has done and all that he has given to his people. And we'll bless your holy name for it. In Jesus' name we pray. And we say it together, amen. Bless you.